Hi, hello, when I come and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So now in this screen, uh, you are seeing the Dynatrace uh, window. And yes, so as I have promised, so we're going to see lots and lots of Dynatrace related interview questions and how to find the problem and what are the solutions that you can provide and how to handle that in the interview, right? So these questions are going to be more interview uh, oriented uh, questions and answers. And another thing is like, you can actually use this in your real time as well. So it's going to be like a win-win situation for every one of us. And uh, again, uh, let me welcome you all back to my channel. So today we're going to do something which is different. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk you through how I would handle a real production issue investigation as if uh, this was, uh, this is a live, uh, I mean, a technical interview. So many of you have asked me like what it is like to troubleshoot some production problems under pressure, especially when you are being evaluated on your problem solving approach. So here, I got a real scenario. So again, let me uh, go through the question. So then I try then I trace uh, interview question. So. Uh, you are getting a question that the interviewer is asking you. So, okay, there, there's a Dynatrace problem feed, which is alerting on a sudden increase in response time for your primary e-commerce service. And you have to describe uh, the step-by-step -step process for investigating and diagnosing the root cause. So let me show you how to do that. And before that, I'll walk you through the entire process out and uh, like how you can handle this in your interview. So firstly, uh, to find the problem feed, I'll have to go to search and then search for problems. So once I go to the problems, in here, we have multiple problems and I'm going to handle uh, with this issue. This is already closed, but still, I'm going to show you what is this issue and how to handle this scenario, how to handle this issue. Uh, so coming back to the, um, so let me give you a walkthrough on this. So before, uh, you even jump into fixing it. So I'll explain you the thought process as if uh, you are going to talk to an interviewer, right? So the first thing is, uh, if you notice clearly, you can see that the error rate has actually spiked up to 67.86 percentage, which is like very critical. And then here you can see how many users have been affected. So there are like totally an 849 users who are affected, which is significantly a very big customer impact. And then the payment services here is the root cause. So here, if you see, we got the payment services and that is actually the root cause of this issue and which is actually a revenue impacting one. And the business will definitely, definitely will, uh, how to get this fixed very soon and then here you can see we have got four services affected and four infrastructure components that have been involved in this so in an interview uh, i would immediately communicate this upward i mean like you can actually give this as an a scenario as an example and tell them that this is a scenario that has happened and how do i approach it and again you can tell them that you have a payment system failure which is affecting nearly 68 percent of transactions and nearly 849 users right and this is a P1 incident, yes. So this is a P1 incident with direct impact revenue, direct revenue impact. So now, before we even jump into fixing it, we have to now find the root cause. So we have to investigate the root cause. And for that, just I'll show you uh, each component, what are involved in this. So the first thing is the Astro Shop payment service. This is our root cause. And then this is under the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster, which is the AKS we have. And then we have got the payment, which is the Astro Shop. Uh, here the namespace the uh, the astroshop namespace and then we have got the payment uh, workload which is specifically affected and but you can also notice that the front end here and then the checkout and then the ingress nginx are also impacted right so this tells me that we have a cascading failure and the payment service failure is causing the downstream effects to all the other services. So in an interview, I will explain the understanding of the blast radius. So when I say the blast radius, what are the other uh, services, the uh, functions, everything has, uh, has got affected. And that's very crucial before we even dive into code level debugging. And then when did this start? So now we have to start analyzing the issues. So when did this start? So if I look at the timeline, here you can see, I can see the error spiked at around like 1, 2 p.m. on September 27th. So the pattern shows that it is not a gradual degradation. If you see, it's, if it is a gradual degradation, you can see it must be coming in a gradual way, but this is actually a sudden spike. So this means 
it could be because of a recent deployment so you should be uh, ready to um, analyze this way so it should be it can be because of a recent deployment or it can be because of a configuration change or it can be an external dependency failure or it can be even a specific input that is causing the error so now the, i mean again chart it clearly shows you that uh, we went from near zero error to 67.86 percentage which is almost instant again like in my so in, in my experience i will say this pattern indicates that the application logic error with some specific inputs and there could be some database connectivity issues or there could be some third party service integration problems as well so we can actually dig into the logs to confirm which one it is so now in an interview how will i approach this how will i approach this in an interview uh, perspective so firstly i will explain my log analysis strategy and i will say that i can i have i could see lots of logs so uh, nearly like uh, 87,837 records and that's completely a lot of noise and I would uh, I, I need to be like smart about filtering them and if you see uh, there are like spikes in worn logs so here you can see uh, the showing the last 100 logs and if I run the query um, I can see what is happening uh, in terms of that warning logs and again um, I have to notice I mean, I have noticed the warnings, uh, the spike in the warnings right at the incident time. So this correlation is exactly what we want to see. And then uh, our smoking gun. So what, what exactly is happening? So let me break this down uh, line by line, because in an interview, attention to the detail matters. And if I open one of the warnings, even you could be getting one of the warnings and you will be asked to do a root cause analysis on this. And if you see here, the warning clearly tells, I mean, again, um, uh, clearly gives you a lot of matters and you have to uh, make sure that you are reading the details in it and when coming back to the root cause identification the root cause is very very clear and it says that our payment services is rejecting amex cards and it is logging these as errors instead of handling them as expected business logic so here you can see um, uh, the errors in charged.js in line number 73 i can show you if you cannot find it uh, let me quickly search here charge.js in line number 73 all right can you see here yeah so the method is module dot exports dot charge and we have full trace correlation with the trace id so the host name shows which pod is affected so all these four items are very clear so you know uh, where does this error occurs it is in charge.js and then the method is module dot uh, let me just quickly show it to you i'll just highlight it so module dot exports dot charge and then uh, we have full uh, correlation for the trace id so here if you see on the top you can see the trace id of this error and then the host name so everything is clearly shown to us and this is what and this is how you have to find this issue and once you find that so in an interview you can easily easily explain that this is actually a technical failure it's a business logic issue which is being incorrectly categorized as an error and then now coming back to the root cause analysis and the solution so here is what exactly happening and how you can explain it in the interview so the payment service has a business rule that only accepts the visa and mastercard but however uh, the application is treating mx card rejections as system errors rather than expected business outcomes and this is causing two problems one is you get to see false error rate spikes which is triggering alerts and then you are seeing a poor user experience which is the customers don't understand why their cards were rejected so why this matter for error rates so in an interview um, you should dive into why this architectural design is problematic so when you have when you have like 849 users affected who are like trying to pay uh, let's say 30 percent of them have mx cards and you're going to see a massive error rate spike and that's what you're seeing now but these are not technical errors they are business rule violations that should be handled gracefully so the cascade effect here is um, you can see how this affects multiple services the payment services which is logging the errors and i can just show you back to the events yeah. so the payment services is showing the error section for you and uh, 
the front end receives error responses the checkout process is failing and the users uh, retry which is creating more and more and more errors and this shows how poor the error handling will cascade through your entire system architecture and here some of the immediate actions that i will take or i can say that in the interview is uh, i mean like again in the interview they will want you to see both immediate fixes and the long-term solutions so here is my approach for that firstly i'll change the log level from warning to info so that's what i do uh, in terms of uh, the this particular issue so i'll change this from a warning to information because these are not errors uh, Again, this is an immediate fix, and I'll deploy a hotfix to return proper user-facing error messages, which clearly tells that MX are not going to be accepted even in the uh, MX, I mean, in the payment page. And then I'll update the monitoring to exclude any business logic errors from the technical error rates. Uh, and coming back to the short-term fixes, I'll implement proper error categorization. So these are like technical error, error technical errors. And I'll add business rule violations, which is 400s with clear messages, and the user input errors, which is 422s. And then uh, I'll improve the user experience. So clear messaging about accepted card types and the front end validation even before I submit the credit card details. And then I'll even add alternative payment options. So in long term, how will I handle this as a uh, as a performance tester, as an engineer, even a DevOps engineer, or even an SRE engineer, I would show some strategic thinking in the interview. So I'll use separate business logic validation from technical error handling, and I'll use I'll implement uh, circuit breakers for actual payment processor issues. I'll add business metrics versus technical metrics dashboards, and I'll consider supporting MX if business justifies it. And coming back to the um, validation and monitoring, so how to validate? The fix so after implementing the solution here is how i would validate the success so first thing is the error rate should drop to baseline levels and the user satisfaction metrics should improve the payment completion rate should increase and the support ticket about payment issues should should decrease and preventing the future occurrence so i'd set up monitoring for business rule violation trends uh, the payment method usage patterns the user experience metrics and separate technical versus business error dashboards and finally i will wrap up uh, my interview with this I'll just give a quick summarize on what I demonstrated in this investigation that would valuable in the interview. So the first thing is systematic approach, the business impact first. That's how I have started. So looking at the affected users, the services and everything, and then the technical details second, and then the clear communication throughout the process. So how did I clearly communicated throughout the process and then the root cause analysis using multiple data sources. So you can see everything is here. You can f find everything uh, through this evidences here. And then you have to understand the system architecture and you have to understand the cascade effects. It has to be, I mean, like your solution should be both immediate and has to have some strategic solutions. You must have proper error categorization and monitoring strategy. And finally, um, some of the things that you should avoid here. So do not do this in the scenario. Don't immediately start coding without understanding the impact. And don't assume the first thing that you see is the root cause. And don't propose solutions without considering user experience. Because many people I have seen, when the moment they get the interview question, they immediately start proposing the solutions without even understanding or without even doing the analysis. So please ever, ever don't do that. Don't immediately start. Even you know the solution don't immediately propose the solution without considering the user experience and don't forget to validate your hypothesis with data so again let me uh, come back with a question here um, so the question could be like um, the data race uh, problem feed is alerting on a sudden increase in error rates uh, for the primary e-commerce service and uh, Describe your step-by-step -step process for investigating and diagnosing the root cause. And that's the question for this scenario. And as I told you, um, you must answer in this better way, in, the, in a way that where you can uh, really uh, jump into showing the issues and tell them that how will you do the root cause analysis. So with that, I come to the end of this video and we will see another uh, interesting and informative interview related question in our next video. Until then, it's bye-bye from us. I'm going to your favorite Little Salah YouTube channel. Take care and bye-bye.